Welcome to this episode of Patient Perspectives in HCV, a CE podcast series. If you are seeking continuing education credit, please review the front matter for disclosures and the requirements for successful completion of the activity prior to listening to the podcast. A link is found in the show notes that can direct you to this information. After listening to the podcast, please go to practice.cme.com to complete the post-test and evaluation to receive continuing education credit. Thank you for your attention. The podcast will now begin. I'm Dr. Tony Martinez from the University of Buffalo in Erie County Medical Center, and I'm here with my patient of many years, Lindsay, who's been discussing uh, her life experience with hepatitis C. And in this third episode, we're going to focus, Lindsay, on your thoughts around treatment. So you've taken us through the journey of how it all began, how the addiction began, and how the hep C was acquired. You've been diagnosed. we kind of went through some of the the journey around the diagnosis and you didn't start treatment right away. It took some time, right? right. Uh, you were told you had to be sober and abstinent for six months and, and that was a barrier and you continued to use for a while. Uh, and then around 2018, you linked up with us here in La Bodega and uh, for the initial visit. Right. And what were your concerns about, before we talk about actually going through treatment, what were your concerns about treatment in general? What did you know? Did you know it was curable? Um, I did know it was curable, um, but my biggest concern was, am I going to be able to, you know, partake in treatment and not be sick? Yeah. Um, because, you know, I had talked to a lot of people that had went through treatment, um, you know, not even necessarily around that time, but in the past, and they told me about their experiences and how they were sick with, you know, certain medications and how they weren't able to go to work um, or they had to leave work because they were were getting sick from the medicine that they were prescribed. Um, So I was a little nervous about that. Um, I was still going through some things um, personally, as far as, you know, I was clean, I was abstinent from drugs, um, but I also decided to get off of MAT um, as far as the certain medication I was taking um, because I didn't want to be physically addicted to anything. Yeah. Um, I did change to a different MAT that was not addictive um, and I started to go to self-help meetings. But I did have post-acute withdrawal symptoms because at that point in from time- From coming off your MAT. From coming off of MAT and coming off the heroin. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was still going through, you know, the struggles of that. And I'm like, you know, to add another medication on top of this, you know, is this really going to work for me? Is it going to lead me back to using? Um, so you're already, you're, you're coming off of narcotics- Right. We have some MAT stuff in there that you're you're struggling to come down and come off of. Mm-hmm. You're about to begin Hep C treatment. You don't feel great to begin with. Right. You're worried about side effects from the Hep C meds. Yeah, and I'm trying to go and I'm in court to get my my child back, and you know I just had a lot going on. There was a lot on my plate and a lot riding on me staying abstinent from drugs. Um, so it was just a very um, hard, stressful time. It was yeah. honestly the hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my entire life. So, And the side effect piece of it, the, the two things that we hear the most from patients a- around treatment, probably three things. One, there's still a lot of patients that don't know it's curable. Mm-hmm. They don't know that the cure rate's now like 98%. Right. The second thing is what you just mentioned. There's a fear of side effects. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of patients aren't aware that in, you know, there's no more interferon-based therapy. There's no more needles or shots that it's just oral based regimens that are much more tolerated did you know anybody in your life who went through hep c treatment in old days yes yes and that was where my that was where my concerns came from because i didn't know about the new medications yeah Um, and that's something that we hear a lot it's almost like this post interferon sort of ptsd that a lot of patients have that even if you never went through that treatment you knew someone and saw someone who did right and the, the other big concern that we hear from patients is that there's potentially an interaction with their MAT because we know some of the older regimens like the interferon-based uh, regimens in the old days could potentially lower 
uh, your your concentrations of the MAT meds, which mm -hmm. is no longer the case. But it's still this sort of uh, not myth because it it was accurate, but it's still out there mm -hmm. among patients that they're still concerned with it. Right. Did you ever hear anything surrounding a liver biopsy? Um, I somebody that I talked to that was older, you know, that was in they had got Hep C from a tattoo um, and they got treated. And I want to say it was like the nineties. Um, so I, I knew that it wasn't the same, but I just didn't know what the difference was going to be. You know, I just know that there is side effects of medications. So um, I knew that at the time, you know, my liver enzymes weren't high, but they weren't what they were supposed to be. So I wasn't really concerned about a liver biopsy per se, um, but I did hear of it. Yeah. Yeah. We have a lot of patients that are, con they're, they're still nervous about that because that's, again, that's part of the old, the old days, the old school was sort of that everybody got a liver biopsy and there's all these non-invasive ways that we can assess do you have any scarring in your liver now mm -hmm. that, you know, there's no more needles, there's nothing that's invasive right. anymore. Um, and I, I think a lot of times that's something that holds patients back from, you know, starting up and, and starting treatment. Mm -hmm. And before you got to us, you had mentioned that you saw some other providers, you're engaged in your MAT program, you're talking to people there. How much education did they give you about your treatment options? Honestly, I never made it to that point. Um, like I said, with the, when I was at the clinic, um, getting MAT, um, they stopped me from getting information because I was not abstinent at that time. Um, when I decided to go into treatment again in 2018 of March, um, I was in rehab and, you know, they did the test which I already knew I had it and it came back that I had it. And they said that, you know, I could get treatment and I was going to link with a provider that they link patients with um, when I got out. And it was funny because my mom took me, um, I, I had went to a sober living house and my mom came to get me to take me to the appointment. And when we got there, the doctor wasn't there. And so we had to reschedule the appointment. And after that, I ended up relapsing and started using again for about four and a half more months before I got into another facility. Um, and that was in August of 2018. Um, and then when I came back out of that is when I linked with you. Um, so and that's when I got education. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, I think you, you raise an important point um, in this part of your story, though, you know, a lot of times people who are using and you've described some of the chaos, mm -hmm. you know, so to speak, you had a lot going on. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had your child, your, you had, I think you mentioned you had some legal stuff that mm -hmm. was in there. You're trying to avoid getting sick. I mean, all of these things become a factor. And Oftentimes it's not so simple that you just get a referral and go to the appointment right. and that's it. It's nice and, and easy like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that your journey highlights how many touches it might take right. before you get linked from that time of diagnosis. And it might take six months, it might take a year, it might take six years, but you have to kind of keep, providers have to keep trying mm -hmm. because every time you do it again, right. there's a chance that it's going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't quit on people. We've heard programs where, you know, if you miss three appointments, they refuse to see you. Um, right. You know, so I think that in, in this arena of hep C treatment, we, we really need to be understanding of what people are facing. And right. I think that you've, you've described uh, a lot of that. So you get the, the base, baseline workup done it's that wasn't too bad no. a couple labs and right. you know ultrasound and pretty easy and you get treatment meds mm -hmm. you start up therapy and uh just talk us through it how was it how was being on treatment um my biggest thing i've never been good at taking medicine um unless it was something that was a narcotic um, so I had to set alarms on my phones to remind me when to take my medications. Um, and the side effects were mild. Um, it wasn't anything 
unbearable. I was still able to go to work. Um, it did make me a little sleepy. I don't know. And I really can't say that it was from that though, because like I said, so many other things I had a lot on. of underlining factors going on. Um, so all in all, it, it wasn't bad at all. And at any point on treatment, did you, some patients report that physically they feel better? Yeah. I mean, I, like I said, I was, I had post-acute withdrawal symptoms from coming off of the MAT. Yeah, so that you're I was still on. sick anyway. Right. Um, and so I just tried to, you know, put things in my life to occupy my time so that I didn't think about it. Um, so in the beginning in my treatment, but I did start to feel better. So I don't know if it was necessarily from the treatment or if it was just from getting farther away from, you know, the, the drugs. drugs. Yeah. So, um, but as far as like side effects or, um, symptoms that I had, I, I never felt symptoms that I know of. Yeah. Um, so I don't really think there was anything to feel better from. I, I don't, you know. Yeah. You didn't have any symptoms to begin with. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We have some people that, you know, they just report that maybe their fatigue actually improved or their joint pain improved. Right. Um, right. Tell me about the first time that you came into the bodega with us. Um, how did you feel? Did you feel like it was a safe space? Did you feel like it was stigma free? Definitely. Um, I honestly, I felt completely different than the other two times that I was meeting with people. And what made it different, would you say? Um, I think just the fact of the inter interaction with the people that work here. Um, and they made me feel like safe, like it was going to be okay. Um, and it's funny because they asked me about my story. Um, they asked me like, you know, what has brought you to this point? You know, what are you doing now? Um, you know, and when I talked to, you know, certain people here, they just, they made me feel like everything was going to be okay from this point on. Um, and, you know, they told me that my story was incredible and that, you know, it's a good thing that I am sitting here. And obviously I am sitting here for a reason because there's a lot of things that were in my story that like are just, I don't even know to this day how I'm still sitting here. And like I said before, it's just God has a plan for me, I believe. So, um, is it safe to say that you felt hopeful? Yes, definitely. It was that things, definitely turned for the better for me. Um, slowly but surely, you know, one day at a time, things just kept getting better. Um, you know, everything came back to me that I lost um, and I started to love myself again, so. That's incredible. Um, I can't wait till our next segment, I, till people hear what you're doing next. And uh, hopefully uh, people will join us for episode four and we'll talk about post-treatment and what's come of things and uh, see where we're at now. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for listening. Please go to the activity page on practicepointcme.com to complete the post-test and evaluation to receive continuing education credit.